Today we are, I guess you might say, blessed with a beautiful reading from John's Gospel about how Mary Magdalene is at the tomb of Jesus. And she's looking, she tells us in the Gospel, she's crouching down as it were, uh, trying to see his body. Of course, this doesn't surprise us. That's how we might think or imagine in our own minds how it would be to look deep into the, to the, to the grave, so to speak, to see if she could find Jesus. It might surprise us to know that this term that is used about her crouching down is a term that's only used on another, one other occasion in the Gospels, in the Gospel of Luke, when Peter does the same thing. He crouches down, looking to see if he can get just to, for a second, get to see Jesus in the tomb, but he doesn't. There are other occasions when we hear this use of this term, and it's used in some, also some very profoundly spiritual and profoundly, I guess you might say, um, inspirational ways. Uh, occasions that it's used, it's used to talk about how even the angels would want to look down and see what they have witnessed here on earth of the grace of Jesus in his resurrection. The freedom, perhaps, of those who have come to know and love the Lord. How we interpret it, we see a number of things. Certainly, the sadness of Mary Magdalene. Oh, it's overwhelming. We might know her sadness. I think sometimes about this when I hear people who might express to me the loss of a loved one and how the great sadness it causes them. And yet they know somehow there's that glimmer of hope that there will be a moment when that will all be erased somehow. But the sadness, we have to go through it. Mary Magdalene, as well as the others, had to go through it. But in spite of the sadness, we might say, well, that's understandable. But it's profoundly, I guess you might say, uh, underlined or perhaps uh, uh, given with exclamation points. So sad, almost traumatized, she didn't even recognize two angels. Well, if I saw two angels, I might be a bit surprised, you know. If I uh, understood that to be something very special, it would catch my attention. And yet she doesn't. So much so is her sadness that she doesn't even recognize Jesus. But here's the moment. It's not on a theological or great profound thought that brings them close together again when he says her name when he says Mary. And she replies, Rabuni, which is a term in Aramaic that means my, my teacher, my, but mine, you know, somehow it's very personal. The idea of, of uniting the, I guess you might say, the human with the divine interwoven into the whole fabric of this occasion reminds us how important it is sometimes that we too can see beyond the present moment, that there is something that is waiting for us. This interesting use of the term of get, crouching down in order to see Jesus in the tomb is only used, as I mentioned, in the Gospel of Luke one time, and this one occasion in the Gospel of John. But even more interesting, even more perhaps might be of interest to us, is this, I guess you might say, spiritual, uh, spiritual dimension. You know, it's so wonderful that in the letter of James, in the letter also of Peter, we hear the use of this term as if the angels themselves want to look down upon from heaven to see what was occurring on earth where Jesus has given us through the Spirit his grace of freedom and liberty. There are many ways that we can look at this. Of course, the fact that it's used rarely reminds us how important this term must have meant for the people of that time. I would say this much, at least it might help us in terms of seeing it. We may see it in a similar way. Contrasts. You know, the one that should know Jesus doesn't recognize him, is oblivious to the, to the, to the presence of angels, you know? And yet also, a sense, I guess you might say, of similarities, of parallels. You know, she suffers her similar sort of trauma and finds in herself an opportunity by which she too, may me not now, but at one future moment, may be able to find the meaning and message of what has occurred. Because? Because she's the first to witness the resurrection. What a beautiful thought then that we too may also be witnesses in a similar way. And so we pray. Mighty God and Father, we know all too well that we too may be passing through a very serious time. People who are suffering from the coronavirus and other things, we may recall moments in which we too have suffered trauma or, or sadness, but perhaps it's holding on to that glimmer of joy, of hope, the promise of tomorrow, the resurrection given to us all. May we see that like Mary Magdalene, we too are drawn always to you. And so we pray that you bless us in this time, in this moment, especially for those who are passing through difficult ones and finding it the hope and love of Christ who makes all things possible. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.